In this video, we're going to take a look at rational functions by looking at their non-permissible values and then how to simplify them. So a rational function is a function that can be written in the form p of x divided by q of x. So essentially it is a fraction where the numerator and the denominator are polynomial expressions and q of x cannot equal zero. So this leads to looking at some special values. So whenever you use a rational function, there will be values that must be excluded or are considered non-permissible. And this is based on the denominator. So thinking back to radical functions, when you were taking the square root or the fourth root or any even root, you needed to take a look at the radicand, which was the inside of the root. So for rational functions, we need to take a look at the denominator. So let's take a look at some examples to find the non-permissible values. So in this first one here, we see that our denominator is 6n squared times q. Now we know that the denominator can't equal 0. Because we have two variables here, we need to take a look at each variable separately. So since they're being multiplied, we know that n can't equal 0 or q can't equal 0. Now in some books, you will actually see that it says n equals 0 and q equals 0. Now that's just simply answering the question because it says determine the non-permissible values and you would say the non-permissible values are n equals 0 and q equals 0. Now in the second expression, we have again two factors in our denominator. So we have x and 4x minus 3. So again, we're going to set each part equal to 0, each factor. So we have x is equal to 0 and 4x minus 3 equals 0. Solving the second expression, we get 4x equals 3 and x equals 3 fourths. So again, we get two non-permissible values. In the third expression, uh, we need to factor before we can actually find the non-permissible values because these expressions or these terms are not being multiplied. So this becomes x divided by x minus 4 and x plus 1. Now that we have two factors that are being multiplied in the denominator, we set each factor equal to 0, x minus 4 equals 0, x plus 1 equals 0, and we solve for x in each expression or each equation. So we have x is 4 and negative 1 for the non-permissible values. All right, now we're going to turn our attention to how to simplify rational expressions. So to simplify a rational expression, we first need to factor uh, the numerator and the denominator, determine any non-permissible values based on the denominator, and then we're going to divide the numerator and the denominator by all the identical factors so that we have it simplified. So I'm going to take a look at three different type of expressions. Um, the first one here, you will notice that there's no plus or minus signs. Okay. So that means that all of these expressions is already all multiplied together. So what we can think of 8, if we wanted to factor this or fully factor, this would be the same as thinking of this as 2 times 2 times 2 times pi times r times r times r. In the denominator, 12 would be broken down into 2 times 2 times 3 and then times pi times r times r. So this would be fully factored. And the only things that we can cancel off is things that are identical on the numerator and the denominator. So we see that there's a 2 on the top and bottom, another 2, a pi, and two r's. So once I've canceled them all off, what I'm left with in the numerator is 2r, and then the bottom, I have a 3. Now, I forgot to find the non-permissible value, so if we take a look, there is only one variable, and that variable is r, and since it's being multiplied already in its factor, we know that r equals 0 is the non-permissible value. All right, now in the second expression, we uh, don't have anything factored, so we have to be have this dot or things that are multiplied or factors that are multiplied before we can cancel. So we cannot cancel the x squareds because these are separated by minus signs here. So um, our numerator is a difference of squares and this factor is to be x minus 1 and x plus 1. 
in the denominator, we get x plus 2 and x plus 1. So if you think about it, I could put a dot in between here, and then anything that is separated by a dot would be considered one factor. So when we take a look in our numerator and denominator, we have a common factor of x plus 1. So these can be crossed off, and then we have left x minus 1 and x plus 2. Now, before I crossed off, I should have looked for the non-permissible values because the non-permissible values are found before you cancel. So when we take a look at the expression, we actually want to take a look at the denominator from this part here. So from here, we can see that x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 1 are the non-permissible values. All right, the last expression again, these are separated, these terms are separated by minus signs, so we cannot factor, or sorry, we cannot cancel until we've actually factored because these aren't being multiplied all together. So we need to have either little factors that are single monomials or binomial factors. So in our numerator, we can factor out a 2x, and then we have x squared minus 2x minus 15. And then in our denominator, we have 4 bracket x squared minus 5. All right, so I need to factor a little bit more. Um, so in the numerator, I can go 2x and then x minus 5 and x plus 3. And then in the denominator, we can't factor anymore. So I just have 4 and then x squared minus 5. So actually, the only thing that I can cancel um, there's no common binomial factors, but there is a common monomial factor. So here we see this is 2, which becomes 1, and 4, which becomes 2. So two, think of this as 2 over 4, which reduces to half. There's nothing else that cancels off. Now, actually, I forgot to mention, let's go back to this first question. When we cancel things off, things don't become 0. They actually become 1. So all of these that I've canceled off, all these 2s and pi's, we would actually consider them to be 1, and even these would be 1. We don't usually write it down um, because we don't need to. But just so you know, they don't become 0, but they actually become 1. So this expression here ends up being x times x minus 5, x plus 3, and then in the denominator we have x squared minus 5. That's as simple as this one gets. Now to find the non-permissible values, remember I should have looked back up here. And the only expression that had a variable was the x squared minus 5. So we could say that x squared minus 5 equals 0. So x squared equals 5. And then we're going to square root both sides. So x equals plus or minus the square root of 5. All right. Now, the last thing that we want to take a look at, or I want to show you, is... Um, how that rational expressions actually have pairs of non-permissive values. So let's take a look at this. So in this expression, you'll notice that there's an x and a y variable. So we're gonna find the non-permissible values by setting the denominator equal to zero, which I did before. And then we're gonna solve for one of the variables. So I have x minus four y equals zero. So x equals four y. However, I could have also solved for my y value. So I could have gone negative 4y equals negative x, and then divide both sides by 4, so I get y equals x divided by 4. So we write the non-permissive value as an expression. So right now we have these two expressions here. So x equals 4y, or y equals x divided by 4. So the value of one variable depends on the value of the other variable. So we say that non-permissible non values come in pairs. And that's only true when we have it at two variables here. So if I ask you to evaluate the non-permissible value expression for y equals 1 and y equals 3.25, we can plug it into either expression. And you can see that it's probably easier to plug it into the first one since my um, x value is already isolated. So we have x equals 4 times 1, so x equals 4. So the non-permissible value would be 4 comma 1, and we have 
kind of a point as an expression because um, we have two variables. And when I check for the second one, we're going to go 4 times 3.25. <coughs> And so this gives us 13. So our second expression, our second non-permissive value, would be 13 and 3.25. Right. Now to show you one more type of example, I just wanted to take a look at something called um, additive inverse. So it's nice to see and see if you can recognize expressions that have an additive inverse. So if you take a look at this one here, we, um, I want you to simplify the rational expression. Um, so the first thing remember was to factor. So when you factor, you're going to get x minus 9 and x plus 9. So when I write this out and I look at the denominator, I can see that x minus 9 looks like 9 minus x, but the reverse. So then it's the two terms are reverse. So this is called an inverse. Kind of. So what we need to do is we need to um, make them the same so that we can cancel off. So what I'm going to do is I like my x's to be in the front. So I'm going to leave my numerator. What I'm going to do in my denominator is I'm going to factor out a negative 1. So what I do, um, I'm going to end up with negative 9 and then plus x. So Instead of writing it as negative 9 plus x, let's reverse it. So my x term is first. So this would be the negative for this negative here. And then I have x minus 9. So now I can see I have a common factor of x minus 9 in the numerator and the denominator. And now I can cancel them off. So what I have left is I have x plus 9 and then in the denominator, remember things don't cancel off to become 0, I have a negative 1. So really, this is actually negative x minus 9. Now looking for the non-permissible values, remember I need to go back to the beginning where it was being factored. So here we have 9 minus x equals to 0. And let's move the x to the other side. So then I have x equals 9 is my non-permissible value or x equals, actually that's a little bit better to write the x first.